Hi, welcome to Transform Life Church. In a few moments, we'll be joining the service already in progress. If you're joining us for the first time, I'm glad that you're here with us. I pray that today's message will be a great blessing to you. So don't go anywhere. I'll be back in a moment to share some next steps with you. And I thought as we, we close out the series that we could make a declaration about what it means to be naturally supernatural. So I came up with some scriptures and Linear was gracious enough to make it into a memorable poem. Praise the name. So before I butcher the poem, I call the poet to come and say the poem. <laughs> So let's say this together and linear will lead us after three one two three i, I am, am strong, strong in the lord and, and in the power of, of his might i am blessed with spiritual blessings in, in this, this world i am a light i am a new creature partaker of his divine nature i am doing all things through christ who strengthens me from the power of darkness, I have been set free. I am being transformed by the renewing of my mind, the curse of the law I have left behind. I am forgiven. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in Christ. I am led by God's spirit. I am healed by his stripes. I am a child of God. This truth is eternal. I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. I am naturally supernatural. supernatural. Let's give the Lord a praise for who he is and what he has done in our lives. And then after that, you may be seated. Praise the name of the Lord. Talents abounds in this place. Yes. Yes. Tell him not to clear to the overflows. Today, I don't want you to be a spectator either. I need you to engage. I need you to just be with us, you know? And one of the things that we said last week, this is activation week, and, and I'll explain what I mean by that. One of the things we said last week is that Jesus is our example. And the reason why we mention that is that Jesus um, was 100% God, but 100% man. And while he was on the earth, he didn't operate as God. That drop. The scripture clearly says that he put aside his divine ability and walked in his humanity. He walked in his humanity because he needed to be the second Adam to die for our sins so that we could step back into what Adam was designed to be. So when we look at Jesus' life, his life becomes an example to us. Anything he accomplished, we can also accomplish. Anything that he did, we can also do. And just to prove it, he said it. Jesus said this. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I am doing, and they will do even greater works. Everybody say greater works. They will do even greater works than these. They will do even greater works than these. So as I told the first service, make us not concentrate on the greater works yet. Make us just concentrate on the works. Because if I can get that, I'd be, I'd be good to go. And, and we need then to discover, since he operated as fully man, what was his secret? How did he get empowered to do these things? You see, Jesus was empowered to do these things because Jesus was anointed. Everybody say anointed. anointed. Jesus read this declaration about himself, and he said this in the book of Isaiah. Let's read this together, please. After three, one, two, three. And I'm speaking to the overflows. Let me hear you from here. Let's read it together. It says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord. Because He said, Jesus accomplished this because he was anointed. So let me define anointed for you. Anointed is creo, right? It's Greek. It means the authority 
and the ability to perform God's will with supernatural strength. Everybody says supernatural strength. I, no man, you see, in this place, when you come from home, you know, that means you know, nice and fresh. Supernatural strength. In other words, in addition to that, Christ in Greek is Christos, which means the anointed one. You see, the anointing empowers you to walk in authority and, and power. The anointing is there to empower you. There comes a point in our life where we have to start to press for this anointing. If Jesus needed this anointing, you need this anointing. If he was perfect and God's son, God's only begotten son, because we, once you get born again, we are God's children. His only begotten son, his, his special son. That means that you and I need this anointing, but we have to press in for it. We have to desire it. We have to want it. I read one author that said, this is why many Christians are fearful, angry, bitter, and unproductive. They are not walking in the power of the anointing. And when we look at, at all of the men and women of God that we see that made an impact in their generation, they set their hearts towards God. People like Nehemiah and Ezra and, and Daniel and Samuel. And then when we look in the New Testament, the apostles walked in the anointing, but some of the people who walked were some no-name people. Dorcas walked in the anointing, changed her entire society, and all she was doing is sewing clothes. We have people like, like, like Steve who walked in the anointing, people like Philip who walked in the anointing. Here's what the apostle says. Now it is God who makes both us and you stand firm in Christ. He anointed us. Everybody say anointed. With, with, um, set his seal of ownership of us, on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. The anointing is designed to be an integral part of your night life. Tell your neighbor, you should be living the anointed Christian life. Just tell your neighbor that. <laughs> tell the other one that no. Just tell, him the, tell the other one that. <laughs> So I want to look at Acts 10 and just draw some observations about the anointing. But let us read Acts 10 together first. It says this, after 3, 1, 2, 3. And you know God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. So let's make some observations from that. The first observation I want to make is that the anointing comes from God. And, and it says Jesus was anoint, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and, and power. The anointing is of divine origin. It enabled Jesus to function supernaturally, which is actually the natural Christian life. And therefore, it is not something to be afraid of. Because some of us, as we hear anything that is outside of our normal ex expectation, we start to get to, it is God. How many people in this room know that God is good? There's no evil in him. So therefore, if God is good and it's God who gives it, it is good. Not true. And God anoints men and women of God, he anoints his children. Therefore, write this down. The anointing is for God's sons and daughters. The anointing is for those who have been born again. It is those who know him personally. And both in the New Testament and the Old Testament, we see that the anointing was just a regular part of life. Anytime you want it to be set apart, you are anointed. And anointing in the Old Testament, they'd use a big flask of oil and they'd pour it on your head. And we, we know what we're doing that today. Everybody does say, praise the Lord. <laughs> right? Uh, <laughs> and what it would symbolize is the presence of the Holy Spirit coming on an, an natural life and making that life extraordinary. So when you consider somebody like King David, somebody who nobody thought had any ability. Think it through. 
when his father was asked to carry him to the anointing session for the next king, the father left him at home. That means that he was nothing special. But when Samuel anointed him with oil, the next act he did was conquer a giant. How many people want to conquer some giant in the place? The anointing came upon him and conquered a giant. He became a leader in terms of the army of Israel. And eventually he graduated to become Israel's greatest king. A man who started from nowhere. When Samuel anointed Saul as king, Samuel said this to Saul. The Spirit of God will come powerfully on you and you will prophesy to them and you will be changed into a different person. In other words, when the anointing gets a hold of your life, if you cooperate with God, you're not even going to recognize yourself in a few years' time. What God is able to do with you, through you, you are going to say, my God, is this me? Is you plus the anointing. They say, the anointing will move powerfully. God is going to anoint you powerfully this morning. Number three, the anointing releases God's power in my life. The anointing, empowerment is a common result of the anointing. Jesus was anointed with power and he used the power to, to live a naturally supernatural life. And if Jesus needed power, I said it already, you definitely need power. And I want to give you a, a funny story out of the Old Testament. And, and I, I picked up this one because I want to make a point from it. How powerful and real the anointing of God is. Let's read this together. It starts with Elisha. One, two, three. Elisha died and was buried. Once while suddenly they saw a band of raiders. So they threw the man's body in Elisha's tomb. When the body touched Elisha's bone, the man came to life and stood up on his feet. So powerful was the anointing on Elisha's life, it seasoned down to the bone. That even when he was dead, the bones were alive with the anointing. Now, of course, not everybody has that kind of level anointing. God, that is a special level of anointing. But I said this to say, some of us, when we hear that God can empower you, I am so weak, I can't do anything. You cannot be weaker than dead. <laughs> and if anointing can make dead board work, if you have life in your body and breath in your lungs, that means that God can do something. Amen. All it needs is that you do something, turn to him and put out a little effort. You never need too much, you know, just put out something. <laughs> Sometimes infinity equal infinity. You see, here's the thing. We're too self-conscious. The anointing is not about you. It is about God. And us standing to just do something for God. God wants to anoint you. Anointing is the power of God through man's weaknesses. We need the power of God to undo some things the enemy has done in our lives. We need the power of God to stand against the powers that are standing against you. We need the power of God, if you, are, if you have children here, to stand up God against your picnic and say to the enemy, if you're going to touch them, you have to pass through me first. But realize, I just want to remind you, I am seated in heavenly realms, far above. Praise Everybody's understand what I'm saying? You need to start talking. You need anointing. Sometimes when you're in trouble, there's nobody to call. But you don't need nobody. That's not true. You don't need no flesh, but you need a master. <laughs> Is everybody understand what I'm saying? You can call on the name. The anointing empowers me to do God's will. It says Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. So write this down. The, the, the anointing empowers me to do good. In other words, the, the anointing empowers me to serve this good. Is sometimes you're good enough. But the anointing is not for you alone. The anointing is for you to do things to other people. It says Jesus went 
around doing good. There's some good for you to do and there's an anointing you need to do that good. You need this anointing. The anointing enables you to walk in the power and in the gifts of the Spirit of God. And this was highlighted in Jesus' life. Healing all who are oppressed by the devil. This is a heritage of every born again Christian. This is the enemy has nothing over you. In the anointing, you can stand your ground against the attack of the evil one, but you can join with somebody else and stand your ground against the attack of the evil one and them. Because you are standing in the anointing. As a matter of fact, the anointing can cause shattered lives to be, to be made whole. It says, the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. In other words, sometimes you know some people, they're in some problems and the whole generation of them have been walking with this yoke on them back. When they buck you up and you are carrying the anointing, your anointing you have can break the yoke on their lives. No, you are not saying. I'm not saying that you must walk across the road and say, come here, you have a yoke. <laughs> <laughs> because you have to be in agreement. Is everybody with me? You see, the anointing can bring hope to the hopeless, salvation to the lost, healing to the sick, freedom from those who are under demonic oppression. The reason why the Son of Man came was to destroy the devil's works. The anointing. The anointing that is evidence that Jesus is, that God is alive. In the passage, it, say, it ends by saying, for God was with him. You see, the anointing in your life is evidence that God is alive. Two weeks ago, I told you that you are a city on a hill. You are designed to be on display if you are born again Christian. Here's what the scripture actually says. You are the light of the world. You. No, it says Jesus is the light of the world. No. So Jesus is the sun and we are the moon. Because we are reflecting the glory of God in the lives of the people of God. In the lives of the people of God, you are the light of the world. When you are at your school, people must see the light of God in you. When you are at, I don't know, at your football match, people must see the light of God in you. When you are at your workplace, they must see the light of God. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine. You are designed for good works. There is no such thing as a secret Christian. It does not exist. The scripture actually speaks against it. It says, if you deny me before men, my God. Like, that's crazy stuff, you know. I will deny you before my Father who is in heaven. Mad. And if you don't understand that, never mind. You see, just like people saw Jesus' good works and glorified the Father in heaven, people want to see your good works and glorify the Father who is in heaven. Your good works make people know that God, your good works, let me tell you, the anointing can make you a better parent. It's not everybody going to raise the dead, you know. But the anointing can make you a better parent. The anointing can make you a better teacher. The anointing can make you a better businessman. The anointing can make you, make, you, make you a better ministry leader. The anointing can make you a better leader in general. The anointing can make your intercession better, your prayer better, can make you a better preacher, make you, your good works just better. Number six, the anointing will cost you. And I want to mention this, you know, because sometimes we live in an era where we want everything for nothing. The anointing is going to cost you. The power of God falls on those who search after God. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they are the ones who are going to be filled. You cannot live lives of compromise and expect the anointing of God to flow in your life. Is everybody with me? 
In other words, the closer you get to God is the more the anointing comes. The further you get from God is the less the anointing is there. And there is a lifestyle that is kryptonite to the anointing. Things like willful sin and, and hatred in your heart. You need to start to bend them things. Like. Everybody with me? Some things are no sin. Get rid of sin if you want the anointing. The Puritan said, others may, you cannot. So yes, everybody wearing it, why I can't wear it? Others may, you cannot. Everybody a jump, others may. But you the anointed one, cannot. What everybody, what is wrong with that? It's medicinal. Others? <laughs> but you cannot. cannot. Hey, look, look, man, it's a common thing. No, I, I can live with my girl. Others? <laughs> but you cannot. cannot. <laughs> what you know is that we have a tendency to want to flee feed the flesh and walk in the anointed life. It cannot happen. Let me tell you, it cannot happen. And some of us mistake God's approval for God's patience. So you're living in sin and God is really being patient and saying, fix up yourself. And we think it is God's approval. It is not. God's approval. Him just a whole on. Him don't, him don't want you to suffer the consequence of what is going to happen to you. So he might take time with you. But understand, you know, everybody patience run out sometime, you know. Is everybody with me? Mm. It's the same thing with the gifts. Sometimes because you're manifesting the gifts, you swear that God is with you. The gift is beyond repentance. When him give you, him not take back. It's called a gift. Him don't take back gift. But you can walk in such a way that the anointing is not on the gift. That's why we don't run on prophecy. We have to look at the man's character first. Because the, and the, the gift can say, but the character is not there. And any time that happens, him not hearing a pure source. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes I hear from Satan. Let me talk it straight. So when I run it down, we look upon the, the character first. In our lives, make we decide to just live right. You want the anointing. The anointing is here for everybody you now. If you have been out of grass and all you need to do is just repent and turn. God is faithful and just to forgive you. And he can reinstate you immediately. But others may, but you. So how do we receive and activate the anointing? The first way is through the word. So we're going to pray for you this morning, you know. But the first way is through the word. We have to start to read the word. The word of God is powerful and active. Sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. And we spoke about that last week. It, 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 it starts to do something in your life. It has power on its own to grow in, inside your life. You have to be in the Word. Start to memorize the Word. Start to meditate on the Word. Start to pray that Word back to God. It stirs you. And then as you see the Word, the anointing comes through faith. So write this down. The anointing is expressed in your faith. In other words... The anointing has to do something. It is not to store up. You are not designed to be a lake. You are designed to be a river. Is everybody understand? Right? The scripture says, out of your bellies will flow rivers of living water. So you have to use it. It's use it or lose it. So you have to serve. You have to be doing good, you have to exercise it when, when you get that prompting, you do something and all when it not work you do it the same way now mm -hmm. alright so God's willing, we're going, to, we're going to invite down a guy one of the greatest healers in this season he prayed for 700 people before he saw his first healing 
He believed the word, stretched and prayed for it, and he used to write them down. But now, in other words, he put a demand on it in all when he never see it, he put a demand on it in pressing, pressing, pressing. But now, my goodness, <laughs> it just, it's incredible. You have to press out sometimes when you're not seeing it, you're pressing the same way because God has said it, you believe it, that settles everything. Number three, activate the anointing through prayer. Now, in Acts 4, we see where the church prayed and the anointing just fell on the church. But the truth is that when you look in the Bible, the most often repeated way of passing the anointing is through the laying on of hands. There's an interaction with somebody else. Somebody else who is more anointed anoints the one who is, needs more anointing, right? And, 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 and it is, it is a, I don't even know. That's how God said it. So I'm not even going to try to math out why he said it that way. That's so why he said it. Samuel anointed David. Elijah anointed Elisha. As a matter of fact, Elisha ended up more anointed than Elijah. You understand? But he really got the anointing from Elijah. But Paul anointed Timothy, if you want to call it that. Is everybody with me? So this morning is Activation Sunday. How many people want to start to just be anointed of God? How many people start of hungry? More, 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 all right, more, more, more ish, more ish, right. So we want, a, we want an anointing from God. First service was incredible. So we are going to anoint everybody who wants to be anointed in the room. We are going to make a little tunnel. This is not a word for prayer now. This is be anointed in Jesus' name. Because the anointing doesn't come by the multitude of words. <laughs> what the presence of the Spirit of God is everybody with me? The persons who are going to anoint are our elders, the pastors, and our ministry leaders. So, is the highest people inside this church, and we be, we we trust them. There will be around them. There will be people who are going to help them. Right? So, come worship team. There are people who are going to be helping them. We are going to anoint everybody in this place. That includes. The first overflow, the second overflow, and the third overflow. And what we are asking you to do is just listen for your turn and, and, and participate, engage with what God is going to do. Your life potentially can be changed this moment. We believe also that because this is the Spirit of God, and somebody prophesied it already, that healing is going to be in this room. So we are praying for God to, to touch your life and the anointing to come on your life. But we believe that even in that simple prayer, that healing would come to certain parts of your life. So let's just believe God and step forward. Are you with me? Everybody with me to say amen. amen. Right. Hi again. I hope that today's message was an inspiration to you. I pray that you'd experience God's best in your life. If you made a first time decision for Jesus today, I encourage you to get involved in a local Bible believing church. Also, drop us a line at info at hetransforms.me and I'll send you our book. First Steps for the New Believer. It is free of cost. Additionally, if you are in the Kingston and Metropolitan area, feel free to come and join us on Sundays. You can check our website for further details. God bless you real good.